Well, good evening. Thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Pat Cook. I'm the pastor of student ministries here at Southgate. And whether you are in our auditorium or viewing through the live stream, we're excited and thankful that you've made this presentation part of your evening tonight. Um, just want to introduce some things that will be happening tonight. Matthew Moore is the founder of Lamp and Light Productions, which has the mission of helping people see, hear, and experience scripture in unique ways. Rebecca Baker is one of our own, a member of Southgate and a freelance actor, director, and educator. And Philip Goist is a professional cellist and cello teacher here in the Miami Valley. They are here tonight to present the true light, which combines dramatized scripture and cello music to remind us of the how and the why of Christmas. And they will tell you more about their program in just a minute. Also, a portion of all proceeds from their program will be donated to the Safe Harbor House, a ministry to at-risk women here in Springfield. To find out more about Lamp and Light Productions, please feel free to contact Matthew after the performance. Thank you again for being here tonight. for us to be here with my church family, those of you who are here and those who are joining us online, family and friends, and uh, to all of you, Merry Christmas. And I just want to give a special word to those in the youth group, the young people, because this is the time when you are usually meeting. And I just want you to know how important you are to our church. And I hope you'll be encouraged as you listen to see how God uses individuals and I believe that he can use you to make a difference for his glory. What you are about to experience will be <laughs> part cello concert and part dramatized stories from scripture, 10 different books from the Bible, and um, lyrics from a few carols as well. We'll go back and forth between scripture about the birth of Christ to stories in his adult ministry that remind us why Jesus came. It's the why that's important. Have you taken one of those Christmas quizzes? <clears throat> you know, about the, the when, the where? They never ask a question about why. Why did Jesus come to this planet in the first place? That will be our focus tonight, straight from Scripture, using the New English translation and the NIV. Well, we are in uncertain times. And in uncertain times, it's good to focus on what is certain the foundational truths of the Word of God. So I would ask you to sit back, relax, and enjoy, but I'll actually ask you to proactively open your heart and your mind to the Scriptures. You know when you have a Bible study or you're reading or listening to a sermon and you thought, oh, that right there, that was for me. That's my prayer. That's our prayer. That sometime tonight something will leap off the page and into your heart so that you know that was for you this very strange Christmas season in 2020. Well, may God bless the hearing of his word. We're going to start tonight with some beautiful cello music. This is Philip playing one of Bach's suites for cello number one. Thank you. 
the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For all things in heaven and on earth were created in him. All things, whether visible or invisible, whether kings or powers, whether rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. In him is life, and that life is the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The True Light. Who gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world. And though the world was created by him, the world did not recognize him. He came to what was his own, but his own people did not receive him. But to all who have received him, those who believe in his name, he has given the right to become God's children. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, to glorify the Father, to give sight to the blind, to call all sinners to repentance, to seek and to save the lost, to give his life as a ransom for many, that we may have life and may have it abundantly. Jesus said, for, for this, this reason, reason I was, I was born, born and, and for, for this, this reason, reason I came, came into, into the, the world, world to testify to the truth. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word, word became, became flesh and, and dwelt, dwelt among us. us. This is the genealogy of Jesus, the Messiah, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac. Isaac was the father of Jacob. Jacob was the father of Judah. Judah was the father of Perez and Zerah. Whose mother was Tamar. Perez was the father of Hezron. Hezron was the father of Ram. Ram was the father of Aminadab. Okay. Anashim, Salmon, Boaz. Uh, whose mother was Rahab. Obed. Whose mother was Ruth. Jesse, King David, Solomon. Uh, whose mother had been Uriah's wife. Rehoboam, Abijah, Asa, Jehoshaphat, Jehoram, Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, Hezekiah, Manasseh, Amon, Jas, Josiah, Jeconia, Shealtiel, Zerubbabel, Abihud, Eliakim, Azar, Zadok, Achim, Elihu, Eleazan, Matham, Jacob, Joseph, the husband of Mary. And Mary was the mother of Jesus, who is called the Messiah. There were 14 generations in all, from Abraham to King David, 14 from King David to the exile in Babylon, and 14 from the exile to the Messiah. This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin who was engaged to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. The angel came to her and said, Greetings. You who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. But Mary was greatly troubled by his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. Don't be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son. You are to call him Jesus. He will be great. He will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. But Mary said, How will this be, since I am a virgin? 
the Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. And Mary said, I am the Lord's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. And the angel left her. Mary got up and went hurriedly into the hill country to a town of Judah and entered Zechariah's house and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby in her womb leaped, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. She exclaimed with a loud voice, Oh, blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child in your womb. And who am I that the mother of my Lord should come and visit me? For the instant the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that what was spoken to her by the Lord would be fulfilled. Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked on the humble estate of his servant. For behold, from now on, all generations will call me blessed, for he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name, and his mercy is for those who fear him, from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of humble estate. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his offspring forever. Come thou long expected Jesus, born to set thy people free from our fears and sins. Release us, let us find our rest in thee. Israel's strength and consolation, hope of all the earth thou art, dear desire of every nation, joy of every longing heart. Born thy people to deliver, born a child and yet a king, born to reign in us forever. Let thy gracious kingdom bring. By thine own eternal spirit, rule in all our hearts alone. By thine all-sufficient merit, raise us to thy glorious throne. Jesus said, For, for this, this reason, reason I was, was born, and, and for, for this reason, reason I came into, into the, the world. world. It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but to call all sinners to repentance.
when one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him, Jesus went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. A woman in that town who lived a sinful life learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house, so she came there with an alabaster jar of perfume. As she stood behind him, at his feet, weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them, and poured perfume on them. When the Pharisee who had invited Jesus saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would know who is touching him and what kind of woman she is. She is a sinner. Simon, I have something to tell you. Two people owed money to a certain moneylender. One owed him 500 denarii, the other 50. Neither of them had the money to pay him back, so he forgave the debts of both. Now, which of them will love him more? I suppose the one who had the bigger debt forgiven. You have judged correctly. Do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet, but she has wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman from the time I entered has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head, but she poured perfume on my feet. Therefore, I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven, as her great love has shown. But whoever has been forgiven little, loves little. Jesus said to the woman, Your sins are forgiven. Some of the guests began to say among themselves, Who is this who even forgives sins? But Jesus said to her, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Now when the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law that we might be adopted as children with full rights. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders and he will be called... Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing it and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever.
those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. Now there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. When an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Don't be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy for all people. For today in the city of David, a Savior is born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find the baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing which has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off, and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. Came upon the midnight clear, that glorious song of old, from angels bending near the earth to touch their harps of gold. Peace on the earth, goodwill to men, from heaven's all-gracious king. The world in solemn stillness lay to hear the angels sing. But with the woes of sin and strife, the world has suffered long. Beneath the heavenly strain hath rolled 2,000 years of wrong. And man at war with man hears not the tidings which they bring. O oh, hush the noise, ye men of strife, and hear the angels sing. O oh, ye, beneath life's crushing load, whose forms are bending low, who toil along the climbing path with painful steps and slow. Look now, for glad and golden hours come swiftly on the wing. Oh, rest beside the weary road and hear the angels sing. Jesus said, For this, for this reason, reason I was born, and for this reason I came into the world, so that the blind will see, and those who see will become blind. As Jesus was passing by, he saw a man who had been blind from birth. Yeah. <clears throat> the disciples asked him, Rabbi, who committed the sin that caused him to be born blind, this man or his parents? Jesus said, neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that the acts of God may be revealed through what happens to him. We must perform the deeds of the one who sent me as long as it is daytime. Night is coming when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Having said this, Jesus spat on the ground. He bent down. He made some mud with the saliva, he wiped the mud on the blind man's eyes and said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam. So the blind man went away and he washed and he came back seeing. 
They took the man who used to be blind to the Pharisees because the day on which Jesus made the mud and caused the man to see was a Sabbath. So the Pharisees asked the man how he had gained his sight. He put mud on my eyes and I washed and now I am able to see. Now the Jewish religious leaders refused to believe that he had really been born blind and had gained his sight until at last they summoned the parents of the man. So the Pharisees asked the parents, is this your son? Mm -hmm. And was he born blind? Mm -hmm. Then how does he now see? Uh, mm -hmm. We know this is our son, and he was born blind, but we do not know how he is now able to see, nor who caused him to see. Ask him. He's a mature adult. He will speak for himself. His parents said these things because they were afraid of the Jewish religious leaders. For the Jewish leaders had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Christ would be put out of the synagogue. So the Pharisees summoned the man who used to be blind a second time and said to him, promise before God to tell the truth. We know this man is a sinner. I do not know whether he is a sinner. I know one thing that although I was blind, now I can see. But what did he do to you? How did he cause you to see? I told you already and you didn't listen. Why do you want to hear it again? You people don't want to become his disciples too, do you? You are his disciple. We are the disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, but as for this man, we don't even know where he comes from. <laughs> now that is remarkable. You don't know where he comes from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners. He listens to the godly person who does his will. Nobody has ever heard of opening the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. You were born in complete sinfulness, yet you presume to teach us. And they threw the man out. When Jesus learned they had thrown him out, he found the man and said to him, Do you believe in the Son of Man? And who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? You have seen him. He's the one speaking with you. Huh. Lord, I believe. For judgment I have come into this world so that those who do not see may gain their sight and the ones who see may become blind. I saw in the night visions, and behold, with the clouds of heaven, there came one like a son of man. And he came to the Ancient of Days and was presented before him. And to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and his kingdom, one that shall not be destroyed. In the time of King Herod, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is the one who is born King of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. Now when King Herod heard this, he was alarmed and all Jerusalem with him. 
After assembling all the chief priests and experts in the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem of Judea, for it is written this way by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are in no way least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod privately summoned the wise men and determined from them when the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go, look carefully for the child. When you find him, inform me so that I may go and... Worship him as well. After listening to the king, they went. And once again, the star they saw when it rose led them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When the wise men saw the star, they shouted joyfully. As they came into the house and saw the child with Mary, his mother, they bowed down and worshiped him. They opened their treasure boxes and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Then being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they went back by a different route to their own country. After they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Get up, take the child and his mother, flee to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to look for the child to kill him. Well, Joseph got up, took the child and his mother, during the night and fled to Egypt. Now when Herod saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, he became enraged. He sent men to kill all the children in Bethlehem and the surrounding region from the age of two and under. Then what was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet was fulfilled. A voice was heard in Ramah, weeping and loud wailing, Rachel, weeping for her children, and she did not want to be comforted because they were gone. King Herod died. Joseph got up, took the child and his mother, and returned to the land of Israel, to the regions of Galilee. He came to a town called Nazareth and lived there. Then what was spoken by the prophet was fulfilled. That Jesus would be called a Nazarene. And Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and people. I heard the bells on Christmas Day, their old familiar carols play, and wild and sweet the words repeat of peace on earth. Goodwill to men. I thought how as the day had come, the belfries of all Christendom had rolled along the unbroken song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. But in despair I bowed my head. There is no peace on earth, I said. For hate is strong and mocks the song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. Then pealed the bells more loud and deep. God is not dead, nor doth he sleep. Wrong shall fail, and right prevail with peace on earth. Goodwill to men. Jesus grew up before him like a tender shoot, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain. Like one from whom people hide their faces, he was despised. And we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But... He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds, 
we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Jesus said, for this, for this reason, reason I was born, and for, and this, for this reason, reason I came into, into the world. The Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Wanting to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them. He had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. So they took Jesus out to the place called the place of the skull, and there they crucified him, along with two criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, he saved others. Let him save himself if he is God's Messiah, the chosen one. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was a written notice above him which read, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. <laughs> but the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence? We are punished justly for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then the criminal said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said, Truly, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, for the, the sun, sun stopped shining, shining and, and the, the curtain, curtain of, of the, the temple, temple was, was torn in two. two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last.
though he existed in the form of God, did not consider equality with God as something to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking on the form of a servant, being made in human likeness, being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. As a result, God exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, and I am, I am the worst of them. But here is why I was treated with mercy, so that in me, as the worst, Christ Jesus could demonstrate his utmost patience as an example for those who are going to believe in him and receive eternal life. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, to glorify the Father, to give sight to the blind, to call all sinners to repentance, to seek and to save the lost, to give his life as a ransom for many, that we may have life and may have it abundantly. I'm convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor demons, nor things present, nor things to come, nor any powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And, and the, the Word became flesh and, and dwelt, dwelt among us. Well, God bless you all. May the Word of God work in our hearts and our minds this Christmas season. Merry Christmas. Thank <laughs> you.